And he's one of my favorite guys in the world. It's not my husband, if he were here, I'd say, well, my second favorite guy. Ron, you're my, no, my new favorite guy. Um, but this guy, his name is Dr. John Gottman, G-O-T-T-M-A-N. How many of you have heard of Dr. John Gottman? Mm -hmm. How many of you heard of Gottman? I'm a marriage and family therapist. Oh, of course. Okay, so Dr. John Gottman is the best researcher on relationships in the entire world. He's at the University of Washington. He runs the Gottman Relationship Institute. His research is, is unparalleled. He's tracked couples for over 40 years. He's the guy who can predict divorce with about 94% accuracy based on observing some pretty simple communicative characteristics and in, uh, in, uh, in interactions between couples. He has been sort of, for any of us who study or are practitioners in relationships, sort of at the center of what we try to understand and, and, um, and try to disseminate. One of his findings, one of his suggestions is, um, is about making any relationships better. And I want to share this with you at the, at the beginning because I think it has a lot to do with what we're going to talk about today, but it also is your open invitation to ask questions. One of the things that he suggests is to challenge yourself for even one day, and I would even go as far as saying for an hour, and see if in that hour or in that day you can ask more questions than you do make statements. So most of us go about our days making statements. Like I'm going to spend most of the next hour making statements and telling you things. Um, we fill our relationships and most of our conversations actually with declarations, statements about how we're doing, how we're feeling, what we've observed, telling others about ourselves, even the people we're really close to. Believe me, I make a lot of declarations to my 17-year-old about what he should or shouldn't be doing. But John Gottman's research and others has, have found that if we asked more questions, we connect better with those with whom we're closest and those with whom we have what we call weaker ties. Um, so in our digital age, one of the things that ha is happening is we're strengthening our strong ties and we're weakening our weak ties because we don't tend to ask questions of even the stranger sitting next to us. So part of this opening is to remind you that uh, throughout the day today, ask questions of people that you don't know or, or maybe your um, fellow alumni that you do know. But most importantly, ask questions and share as we go along today, because it'll make this classroom much, much more interesting. So, like any professor worth her salt and any Mount Mary alum with worth her salt, you, you want a quiz today, right? <laughs> I mean, I need to give a quiz. I mean, why would you come to class without some kind of quiz? So the beauty of this quiz today is it's not great, it's not worth any points, you don't have to do any homework, you can even cheat. You can talk to each other. No Googling though, no Googling the answers. Sure, me. Yeah. Sure, me's over here about to get your phone out. Yes. Is there an echo? Is there an echo? No? Maybe it's down here. Back here? They're saying no. Oh, we're good? Yeah. Is it bothersome? No, no. Get close. Inter I bet it's right here. Because I'm hearing something right here. Do you guys want to move? Is there room for them? Because we don't want you to be bothered. Do you want to try? Why don't you try maybe to move your chair? Because you're right. When I stand here, there's a little echo. I think it has to do with this. Sorry. But I told them they had to sit in the front. That <laughs> <laughs> backfired. Anyone who comes late to class and I'm always like, oh, table for two, right down front. <laughs> they never come late again. Okay, so the quiz. Not graded, you can cheat, just don't Google the answers. This is um, a couple questions from a quiz that I give on the first day of my course called Family and Couple Communication. Um, so it's really a, a, a class about relationships. It's the best class today. Um, and so the first set of questions are true and false questions. So chat with your neighbor. The first question that I ask them, and I'll ask you, in most marriages, men initiate discussion of, about problems 80% of the time. 80% of the time. You should see your faces, Joel. Sorry, but someone says, are you kidding me? I thought I'd start easy. False. Ron? Ron, Ron, go back there, Ron? Question number two, so I thought I'd build your 
confidence when people hear that phrase. Right. Question number two, families who eat fewer than five meals a week together are more likely to have children who engage in risky behavior, like early sexuality, drug use, and who don't do as well academically. You know this stuff. It's true. We have some incredible research on this topic. Over time, some coming out of the University of Minnesota, we know that family rituals, and we're going to talk a lot today about women and ritual and friendship ritual. Rituals are profound protectors of our relationships uh, in many ways, and that's really true for children and families. Of course, it's not the eating together, it's the conversation, but that's a topic for another class. Question number three. Due to longer lifespans, most parents will spend more time caring for their parents than they will for their children. We get Some people are saying no. Some people are saying yes. Not your starting question. Heads <laughs> up when you had your baby. Actually, the answer is true. The answer is true that most of us will spend significantly longer caring for our parents, our own parents, than we will our own children, given our, um, our longer lifespans. Um, next question I ask students. Researchers can predict with over 94% accuracy which couples will divorce based on observation of a few key communication behaviors. Were you listening before? Yeah. Uh -huh, exactly. See, you're way above average. Um, so up until this point of the quiz, Students even do pretty well. I knew you would do well because you're sort of savvy women and men in the world. Um, but then we get to this question, and they have a lot more difficulty. And this is not a true false question. This is a fill in the blank. So I'm going to read the question. Um, and there are three very different questions, all with the same answer. So I'll read the questions, then talk to your neighbor or someone around you and see if you can figure out the answer. So what is it? What is common to the life experiences of people who report positive emotional and physical well-being later in life? Why do some parents do better than others, especially in the early years of parenting, when general satisfaction tends to be low and anger and anxiety, especially with partners, tends to be high? <coughs> Why is it that even older women who are single are so unlikely to be lonely? Different questions, same answer. Talk amongst yourselves. I'll give you like 30 seconds. <laughs> Mm -hmm. coming from and 